Please remember there are additional resources and things such as code samples at elithecomputerguy.com. So if you're watching one of these classes and you need to know what code looks like or if you need the links to the resources that we're using, please go to elithecomputerguy.com and take a look at our class posting there. Also, please remember that free to the end user classes are not actually free. It costs me a lot of money to be able to provide this type of content. So if you could click on the donate button and throw in a couple of dollars every month. This will help me be able to continue to provide you this type of material. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class we are going to be going over lists and dictionaries in Python. So this may be one of the classes where less experience is actually better, where if you have experience with other programming languages, what we're going to be talking about today might be a slight bit confusing because you're probably used to arrays, arrays and named key arrays. Basically, this is what you can do with most programming languages where you can actually put multiple variable values into a single variable and then be able to call those values, sort those values, do a whole bunch of of fancy stuff with those values. And so for a lot of people, they're used to using arrays in order to do that. Python, of course, being how it is, does have arrays, but you actually have to use the NumPy module. In the Python world, arrays are used for high-level math. Uh, so if you're going to be doing anything like machine learning, any kind of statistical stuff, that type of thing, you may actually have to import the NumPy module in order to deal with array functions in that module. But a lot of the things that you're probably used to using using arrays for uh, in the Python world, uh, basically you're going to be using generally lists or dictionaries. There are also what are called collections or other collections called sets and tuples that we will talk about in a different class. So one of the important things to be thinking about here, when we think about lists and dictionaries, kind of sort of think about it as a list is an array and a dictionary is a named key array as long as you don't need all of the fancy math around it, right? So basically with lists, you have indexes. So it starts at 0, 0, 1, 2, all the way to infinity. Those indexes have values, and you're able to call them. You're able to do for loops, those types of things. Uh, with dictionaries, you have keys and values, key value pairs, again, like you would have in a named key array. Um, Again, you're able to, to access specific keys. You're able to do a lot of that type of thing. You just can't do high level math. And so that's one of the things where, again, you get into the Python world where it's kind of funny. The more experience you have, the more confusing it is, right? If you're brand new to programming, you're like, list, dictionary, that makes sense, right? And that's it. You just do it. Whereas if you're an old timer with programming, you're like, wait, but but isn't that an array? And then why do I have to do NumPy? And oh my God, I'm getting a headache. So anyways, we're going to be doing lists and, and dictionaries today. It is really, really, really simple as long as you don't overthink it. So here is our first example using a list. Now, one of the important things to take a look at is your bracket types, right? So when you're dealing with lists, lists use the square bracket types. You open with a square bracket type, you close with a square bracket type. When you're dealing with dictionaries, you use squiggly brackets. Open with a squiggle, close with a squiggle. When you deal with something called sets, again, it's another type of collection we'll deal with in a different class, you open with parentheses and you close with parentheses. So one of the most important things out of this class is just get used to looking uh, at how basically how this collection opens. If it's a square bracket, that means it's a list. And basically all you're going to have here is values at specific indexes. If it's a squiggly uh, bracket, it's a dictionary. And there you'll have what are called key value pairs, name, Bob, age 22, shirt size, large, or something like that. So the first thing to, take, to do is take a look at those brackets. Um, uh, so with this, uh, we're creating a variable. So test underscore list equals 
we open a bracket, and of course at the end we close a bracket. When we are dealing with strings, we are going to do a, a single or double quotation mark and then put the string value inside. So again, this is kind of like names. So uh, single quotation mark, Bob, close single quotation mark, comma. So the comma is what separates the values, differentiates the different indexes. So we have Bob, we have Sue, we have Fred, we have Pat. And then at the end, if you simply have a number, you can put in 99 or you just put in the number. It's important though to think about this. Remember when we talked about how in Python it auto assigns data types? <laughs> so one of the things you can screw yourself up with when you're dealing with lists or, or dictionaries and such is if you put that 99, if you put that number within single quotation marks or double quotation marks, it will then assign that number as a string data type. So if you try to do math on it, you may run into problems. And again, this is where we start to see the quirks of things like auto data typing stuff. But anyways, right, that's, that's pretty simple you get your list. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to simply print that list. One of the nice things uh, with Python, uh, unlike uh Oh, and PHP or whatever, like PHP, there's a function called var dump in order to dump everything uh, from a variable to see what the hell you're looking at. One of the nice things in Python is you can just print the variable <laughs> and it'll give it to you, right? So with this, what we're going to do here is we're going to just print the value of test list and that is going to give us this down here, right? So Bob, Sue, Fred, Pat, and 99. We print out Bob, Sue, Fred, Pat, and 99. It shows us, again, with these brackets that this is a list, and so we can go from there. This is very valuable. Simply doing a print and whatever the variable value is, is very useful for figuring out what the hell you're dealing with. Here, it doesn't matter, right? You're creating a code. You know you created a list. It's pretty easy. But one of the important things to be thinking about is when you start using uh, other people's code, uh, like, again, uh, we're, we have classes, and we're going to do more classes on, like, OpenCV. So OpenCV is a computer vision framework that you can use Python with. And many times, OpenCV will pass you a variable that has already been assigned a value. But the problem is you don't know what that value is. Is it a string? Is it an int? Is it a list? Is it a dictionary? Literally, you don't know. And so one of the things you can do is you can simply print out the variable name and it will spit out what the hell that you're dealing with so that you can figure out what to deal with the code past then. So this, this can be a very useful thing. Uh, past that, uh, let me go here and let me comment out. So if we do put a hash or a pound sign in front of something that comments out the line, that line will not run. And then we come down here to our next example in this lab. And this is where you can print out the value or you can access the value at an index in the list. Now it's important to understand with these collections, so whether you're dealing with a list, uh, a dictionary, a set, or whatever else, Else, the first the first index point the first value starts at zero why cuz stop asking questions and just do bob is at index zero sue is at index one fred is at index two pat is at index three and 99 is at index four it's very important to remember this because again in the programming world you type in the wrong number and the computer is going to give you the the wrong results so with this if we say print test underscore list two right so test underscore list uh bracket bracket and then the index number so if you're saying two what name up there do you think is two zero, one, two. So it'll print out the value at the third position because you start at zero out on the screen. Uh, so when we do that, we hit the run button and we can see we print out Fred because Fred is at the third position, which is number two. Again, remember in the coding world, you don't have to be smart. You just have to be precise and understand very stupid rules. So anyways, that's basically what's going on there. Uh, uh, if we go here and uh, again, let's say I do one. Oops, let's say I do one. I can uh, hit the run button and we can see Sue comes out. If we look up here, zero, one. So it prints out Sue. Again, 
relatively simple. Uh, past that, uh, we're going to comment this out, and then we are going to do a for loop. So we talked about loops before. We had a class before with while loops and for loops. So for loops are going to be one of the big loops that you deal with in Python because so many times you're just dealing with data sets, and so you're just going to be basically looping through these data sets looking for something. So with this, uh, as we talked about before in that class, we are going to take this list variable, and then we're going to say for x in test list. And so this x, remember, this name can be anything. For Bob in test list. For name in test list. For, right, whatever in test list. We just do x. When you see x, it's just because mainly we're being lazy. So for each index, essentially, in test list, print out the value at that index. So if we go through and we hit the run button, we can see Bob is on the line, the Sue is on the line, the Fred is on the line, Pat is on the line, and 99 is on a line. And so if you take a look at that, basically what it's doing is, see, it's, it prints. So whenever you do the print command, it prints the thing and then goes to the next line. So when you're doing the 4x loop, so it's going to print Bob, go to the next line. Print Sue, go to the next line. Print Fred, going to go to the next line. Print Pat, going to go to the next line. Print 99, and then going to go to the next line. And then in here, where you start to make your programming more sophisticated, this is where you can put if else statements and that type of thing in there uh, to actually you know, have your program do something. I'll actually show you that in a different example. So this really is the core to what lists are, and uh, it really is pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the sort method within Python for lists. So whenever we talk about a method, basically this is something that is going to affect the value of variables. You can have methods that will make uh, all the all the characters in a string uppercase, and that's a method, or lowercase, or go in and replace certain characters and, and with, with some different other type of characters. That is what a method is. So in the Python world, whenever we talk about methods, basically what we're doing is we're taking an action against variable values in order to do something that is useful. Uh, so in this particular example, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be sorting uh, this list and reverse sorting sorting this list. So again, imagine uh, you have a bunch of names and you just want to sort them into alphabetical order, that type of thing. So here we have test list again. You will notice I got rid of 99 because I don't want to deal with it. Again, do remember in the programming world, <laughs> garbage in, garbage out, right? So if you're supposed to have a list of names and then one of the values at an index in that list is 99, you might run into some weird problems. So one of the things, and we'll talk about this in later classes, is basically how to what's called sanitize and validate data that are, that's going into your scripts to make sure that the proper type of data is going into your script uh, for your script to, to do whatever it is it's supposed to do. But here, we're just gonna, we're gonna pre-clean it because we're doing this manually. So again, list. Uh, Bob at zero, Sue at one, Fred at two, and Pat at index three. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sort the list. So one of the interesting things with the sort method is when you call the sort method, that automatically sorts the list, and that's all you have to do. Some methods, when you use them, I think we'll, we'll show this to you this in another lab, is you actually have to set the variable value to the output of the method, right? So, so it might have to be like test list equals test list dot sort in order to sort the test list and then assign that value back to test list. You have to do that with some methods. Uh, with the sort method, that's not the case. Basically, by just calling the sort method, you will have sorted your list and there's no other equals in here. So we're gonna sort the list and then we're gonna print the list. And basically, when we print the list, we will now see, so it's Bob, Fred, Pat, and Sue. So we can see that we sorted that list alphabetically. Wasn't that easy. Then if you want to reverse sort uh, for whatever reason, still pretty simple, test underscore list dot sort reverse equals true. So basically we're just sorting in reverse order. Not too much to say there. I hit the go button and now it's Sue, Pat, Fred, and Bob. It's in reverse order. And that, that's really a pretty simple way of being able to sort your lists. 
So now let's look at how you add values to a list and how you remove values from a list. So again, we have that test list again, Bob, Sue, Fred, and Pat. We are then going to print out the values in the test list as we've done before. Now what we want to do is we want to add a value to the end of the list, right? So we have a new student in class. And so within our code, we want to be able to add a name to this list. And so we do test underscore list dot append, and then we are going to add Tommy. And so Tommy is now going to be added at the end of the list. We are then going to print out the values of that list. So if we go and we do this now, we can see that we print the list and we have Bob, Sue, Fred, and Pat. Bob, Sue, Fred, and Pat. We append, dot append, the value of Tommy or whatever the name is, Bob, Sue, Fred, Pat, and Tommy. So when you append, you are going to be adding to the end of your list. Let me kill that. Then one of the things that you can do, because again, remember how I've been talking to you about indexes? So index is the specific position in the list. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What if you wanted to add an item or a value to a specific index point in the list? And basically, you just want to move everything else uh, around it. So Tommy was appended, so that got put at the end. What if we want to have a Sally, and we want to insert Sally where Sue is? So we want to put Sally by Bob and make Sue jealous. I don't know, right? So we wanted to say Bob, Sally, Sue, right? So what we do here is we do test underscore list dot insert at position one. Position one is zero, one, so where Sue is, and we want to insert Sally. Now when we insert Sally, Sue is not being replaced. She is just getting moved down a little bit. Right? So basically, this is where we can see Sue was here. So now it's Bob, Sally, Sue, Fred, Pat, and Tommy pretty easy to understand there. That's basically what you're dealing with when you're dealing with inserts. Then if we come down here, uh, basically we can remove. So if we want to remove a value from the list, again, make sure you know what value you're removing. That's one of the big things when you're coding. Make sure you know what the hell you're doing. The biggest problem in coding is you type in something and you're not fully thinking it through and then the computer does what you told it to do. <laughs> and then you scream and get fired, right? So anyways, with this, we want to remove Bob. Bob is out of there. Bob is no longer cool. So test underscore list dot remove Bob within a double or a single quotation marks. And then we're going to print out that list again. So if we run this thing, we can now see that Sally has, or that Bob has been kicked out and Sally has been moved to the front of the class. And then if we go down here, you have the pop method. And so what the pop method does is it removes whatever value is at that, this index, right? So if we take a look up here, um, uh, Bob, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be at this point. Anyways, whoever is at position one, I, even I get confused with this, is going to get removed. It's going to get popped out. Pop removes whatever's at that index. Uh, so we go through and we pop it out. We see that Sue was removed. So it was Sally, Sue, Fred, and Pat. We got rid of, because we got rid of Bob. Then Sue was at this first position. Again, index zero, index one. Sue was at index one. So Sue is now gone. Now it's Fred sitting beside Sally. And that's basically uh, how this works. So this is what you're dealing with, with again, these methods. Again, when you're, whenever you're messing with a, a variable value, changing it, uh, with these types of things. Uh, it's called a method. So in order to add to the end, you use append. In order to add at a specific index point, you use insert. In order to remove a value, you use remove. And in order to remove at index, you use pop, and that gets you to what you, you want. Again, this is the type of thing, as I just kind of show you, I actually screw up sometimes in real time to show you what it's like to be a technology professional. Again, sometimes you get confused with what you're doing. <laughs> you're like, crap, 
<laughs> what did I just do right there, right? And so that's one of the reasons it's important to go through and verify your code and verify your code is actually doing what you think your code is doing and so you don't turn into a mess. But anyways, these are the add and remove methods that you can use uh, that are pretty useful. And again, once you start getting into more sophisticated uh, scripts, uh, you'll be using this kind of thing a lot. So before we end this little segment on lists, I want to show you what to do if you have a string and not a list. So I talked about before in other classes something called CSV files, comma separated value files. Uh, so with uh, programs, spreadsheet programs like Excel, you can actually export into something called a CSV file. And with that, it is a text file that simply has the values separated by commas. Uh, so that you can import it into something else. So you can export from Excel and import directly into MySQL. Or you could export from Excel and import directly into your Python script in order to do whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? But you're sitting here and you'll notice the record equals Bob, comma, Tim, comma, Tom, comma, Tammy, comma, Phil. And what you'll notice is there are no brackets. There are no square brackets. There are no squiggly brackets. There are no parentheses. So what is this? This is a string. So you can't act on this as if it's a list because it's not a list. It is a string. So the question is, is then how do you make it uh, a list so that you can interact, it, interact with it as a list? So what we can do is we can do something called the split method, right? So record equals, right? So record equals this string. So what we're going to say is record dot split single quotation and then comma. So what split does is it splits this string into a list based off of the value that you give it, right? So if you have spaces, so if you want to turn a sentence into a list for some reason, you want to parse that sentence, you could just put a space in there and then would turn all the words in a sentence into different uh, values at indexes within that list, and then you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Again, with a CSV file, with a comma-separated value file, what you can do is you can split this this string into a list based off of the commas. So the commas get removed, the commas get removed, and then Bob will be at index zero, Tim will be at one, Tom will be at two, Tammy at three, and Phil at four. So again, this is where, you know how I talked about before with the, with the methods? Sometimes you have, sometimes you can just do a method and it'll assign the value uh, to, to like the list, like I was showing you before with the sort. Other times you actually have to set the value. So record dot split on the comma, record is going to equal that. So record equals the original record split on the comma. So now record is a list. If we go and we print record, so let me just uh, comment this out down here for a second. So if we print record, we are now going to see, right? So we print record here, that's when it's a string. No, uh, no brackets. Then we print record after the split. We will see the brackets. We'll see the single quotation marks, and then we'll see the commas here for for the separation between all of the the values within that list. And so that is what we're doing. We go down here. And basically, again, we can simply uh, do a for x loop. So for x, every value that's now in the list we can do something, whatever that is. We can send out an email. We can send out a text message. We can we can input into a database, whatever. We're just gonna print out on the screen because this is a simple, uh, simple class. So for X in record, we're going to print X. So we do this, and again, so you have up here, this is the original, this is the list, and now you come down here and it prints out Bob, and then it prints out Tim, and it prints out Tom, and it prints out Tammy, and it prints out Phil. Now, if you're sitting there, you might be like, Oh, do I need glasses? That looks weird. That looks weird. Bob is here, and then all these other ones are pushed over by like one space. Is that a Python thing? Uh, no, that, that, that's a crappy programmer thing, a uh, crappy coder thing. Uh, if we go up here, if we look at this, right? Bob, it's not just Bob, comma, Tim, comma, Tom, comma, Tammy. It is Bob, comma, space, Tim, comma, space, Tom comma, space, Tammy. So again, remember, when you're doing programming, the code will only do exactly what you tell it to do. If you don't tell it to do something, it's not going to do it. So when we separated this string into a list, 
it removed the commas, but it left the spaces because you didn't tell it to do anything with the spaces. And so one of the things that you have to do sometimes is you have to use a method called strip, right? So down here we have x. So for, for every value uh, in, in record is x. So x equals x dot strip. And so what strip does is strip strips out the white spaces at the, the leading and the trailing edge of the, the text that you're dealing with. So this can be very important when you're dealing with things like databases. Remember, Bob space is not the same thing as Bob. Space Bob is not the same thing as Bob. Space Bob is different than Bob is different than Bob space. Right, which can be a real disaster when you're writing code. So by using strip, you strip out the white spaces around the text that you're dealing with, the trailing and the, the beginning uh, to white space, uh, to, again, to try to clean that text up. I am telling you, when you start doing programming, your life is going to revolve around cleaning up text. Um, basically, now, if we run this, we will notice... Bob, Tim, Tom, Tammy, and Phil, they're all now in line because we stripped out uh, the beginning white space that was in front of those names. So that's just a basic example of how you're able to split based off of a value. So again, you could split off of a space. You could split, split off a T, any character value. You can do a split. That turns it into a list. And then down here, strip. Strip is what strips out the white space around the text in that value, um, again, so that you can actually clean up the text. So now we get to dictionaries. So again, dictionaries are like named key arrays in other programming languages. The important thing about in Python is we're going to open and close with squiggly brackets. Lists, square brackets, dictionaries, squiggly brackets. So te di test dict equals open squiggly bracket. Then we're going to have the name for the key. Uh, so this is going to be name. So imagine that this is a student. Name of Fred, age of 22, shirt size of large. So within the quotation marks or single quotation marks, you have whatever the key name is. Colon means equal. And then the value. So within single quotation marks, we're going to have Fred. So the name is Fred comma. The age is 22. Again, remember with numbers, if you put quotation marks around it, it will data type it to a string, which may or not, may not, may or may not cause problems in your particular code, but generally you shouldn't do. So numbers should not have the uh, quotation marks around it, comma, shirt size equals large. And so this is our dictionary. If we print out the dictionary, just to make sure we know what we're dealing with, we can see the squiggly bracket name, Fred, age 22, shirt size large. And again, we can verify we're dealing with what we think we're dealing with. That's one of the things with code. Again, one of the problems you get into with code is sometimes you're trying to solve the wrong problem. So you're sitting there and you're trying to get to like an index value or something. You keep typing the code and it keeps failing. You keep typing the code and you go to, you go to W3 schools and you go to ChatGPT. You go to all this stuff and it keeps failing and failing and failing and failing. And then you find out like what you have isn't actually a dictionary. It's like an object, something we'll deal with later. You know, it's something, it's not what you think it is. And so by simply printing it out, you can verify you're dealing with what you think you're, you're dealing with. So anyways, uh, with this, uh, if we want to get the value at a specific key, uh, so with this, again, the, 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 name of the, the name of this key is name. The name of this key is age. The name of that, that key is shirt size. So if I simply want to print out the name from this test dictionary, I can do print test dict, you actually do square brackets here. So it is square bracket, single quotation mark, name, right? So the name, close it all out. And then if we do here, we can see that it then prints out Fred, right? If I come here and let's say I just simply want to do age instead, it will then print out 22, it will print out the age. So how you gain access to the values at these keys is by using the key name. And that's also one of the reasons sometimes you have to print this kind of thing out, especially if you're doing like API calls or again, using any kinds of frameworks. Sometimes it gives you data and then you know you got a list or you know you got a dictionary. Like you'll be told, you do this code and then a dictionary value will be returned to you. But some of the times they don't actually, you know, document 
what the, like the key value, the key names are. And so you have a dictionary, you're just not sure what to do with it. And so again, by printing it out, that'll, that'll help you out quite a bit. Uh, if we come down here, uh, we can then do a 4x loop, right? Uh, the important thing to be thinking about, though, is whenever you do a 4x loop, uh, do be careful with what the results are going to be. So if you take a look at this, test dictionary, name Fred, age 22, shirt size large. If we do a 4x in test dictionary loop, print the x, what do you think you're going to get the return of? If the answer is the keys, the keys in the dictionary, that's correct. So you're getting name, you're getting age, you're getting shirt size, you're not actually getting the value of those. So do be careful of that. So if you do a 4X in dictionary, you're going to get the names of the keys, not the values of the keys. So if we go down here, uh, what we can do is we can do a little bit of coding. And so what we're gonna do is here 4X in test dictionary. So X, remember X is name. X is age, X is shirt size, the name, not the value. So what you can do is you can print test dict and then simply add those key names. So the first loop prints the value of name, print the value of age, print the value of shirt size. So if we go through here with that, we will then see Fred 22 and large, right? So basically, when we're taking a look at this, when we're saying that 4x, basically what it's doing here is it's automatically putting a name for the first loop, then it's putting an age for the second loop, and then it's putting a shirt size uh, for the third loop, right? 4x. So the x is the name of the key. It is simply inputting it in there uh, every time it loops through so that you get the values uh, that you're looking for. Uh, so that's basically what's going on there. Uh, one of the other things that you can do with this, let me comment this out, is we can go down here and if we want the key value, the key names and the values, you can also use this. So 4x comma y, in test dict dot items. So the items method is going to allow you to get the name of the key and the value of the key, and then you can print out X and Y. If we do this, we're then going to see name is Fred, age is 22, shirt size is large. And that's simply, again, since we're using the items method, on a dictionary, it allows us to access the, the key name and the key value. X is the key name, Y is the key value. One of the things that I'll tell you is if you go to W3Schools, which I would highly recommend you go to the website for W3Schools and take a look at this, is there are way too many ways to deal with this crap. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? Like, again, even when I'm trying to teach these classes, again, I'm when I, whenever I try to teach these classes, I really try to simplify everything so you get the point. I want you to do additional homework. The entire point is you're supposed to be learning how to code, so you, you're supposed to go out and do your own research and learn more than what I tell you. And so I really try to simplify everything down to the base components so you can walk away feeling pretty comfortable and then learn more from there. This is one of the examples where I just want to rip the little hair I have in my head out because there's just so many ways to do with dictionaries. You're just looking at it. You're like, oh, come on now. Why are there this, why is there this many ways to solve the exact same problem? That's just a pain in the butt. So anyways, if you go and do the research, you'll see that there are multiple ways to solve this particular problem. And again, this might actually become an issue for you if you go, uh, you know, if you went once, once you get hired as a professional programmer, because when you go into your environment, uh, the people that have been programming before you, when you're dealing with legacy applications, when you're dealing with legacy scripts, they may have been doing things that again are technically right, but if you have the first coder that that was writing things one way and then you have the second coder that was writing things a different way and then you get in there and you write things entirely different like if i'm coming in behind all of you and i just want to see how, how you like i'm just trying to figure out what you did to this poor little dictionary and you interacted with it like 50 different types of ways 
that can be very, very frustrating. So, uh, so again, this is one of those things. If you go in and you're looking at legacy code and the coder before you did something and it's technically fine and it is stable and it's reliable and nothing is going to go boom, probably just copy what they did. Just keep using that style just to make it a hell of a lot more readable. But anyways, these is the basics of dictionaries and how you can print things out uh, from the dictionaries, both the key value, uh, key names and the key values. Now let's talk about modifying values in a dictionary, adding values to a dictionary, and removing values from a dictionary. Uh, so we have the same dictionary that we had before, Fred 22 and shirt size large, right? You can print this out. We've seen that before, so we're not going to worry about it right this second. Now what if, what if Fred here, when it goes out and starts, starts running, you know, 10 miles a day and starts, starts, you know, watching his weight and all that and has a smaller shirt shirt size you know shrinks lose lots lots of weight well basically all you have to do in order to modify the value within this dictionary is you simply call the the the, the key name so shirt size and then we do equals and whatever value it is that you want to be and then that is now going to be the value right so here if we print this out shirt size will be large what we're going to do is we're going to say test dict square bracket, shirt size equals small, and then we print this out, we will see that it will now be small, right? So Fred, 22, shirt size was large, shirt size is now small, that is uh, pretty easy. Uh, now past that though is the question of how do you add uh, indexes uh, to uh, to your dictionary, right? So you have a name, age, shirt size. What if you want to add allergies, right? So again, you're dealing with students and you've decided that you want to, to add, a add an index uh, called allergy uh, and a value to it. Literally all you do is you call the key that does not exist <laughs> And then you give it a value and that automatically creates it. So simply test addict allergy that does not exist anywhere until now. We set the value to peanut. And then when we print this out, what we are going to see is we are going to see that now Fred age 22 shirt size small. And then we have an allergy of peanut over here. So yeah, allergy of peanut. Right, so now that has been added, and that is literally all you have to do uh, to add a value. Uh, past that, if you want to uh, remove a value or remove an index from this, let's say we no longer want to deal with age for whatever. We're not going to be ageist in our kindergarten. <laughs> Anybody can come to our kindergarten. It doesn't matter what age they are. Anyways, all we do is we use that pop. Remember pop from list. We can use pop as a method again. So we say pop age. So we're going to pop the key name of age. And that will remove age. And when we run it, we will now say, see, we have Fred, shirt size of small, allergy of peanut, and we are no longer worried about the age. Uh, so again, all of this is relatively simple. As I've said many times, W3Schools is great for reference. You may have to go through and just reference this every once in a while, but it really, really is simple. Uh, if you want to change the value uh, of an index, you can just simply call, call the, the key name, set the new value. If you want to add a key name. You just simply call the key name that does not yet exist and you give it a value. And then if you want to get rid of a key name, you use, dot pop, you use pop and whatever the key name is and you get rid of it. Pretty simple. So our final lab for this particular class is a nested collection. So you can have nested loops, you can have nested dictionaries, nested sets and tuples and all of that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and this is going to be something that you're going to get very used to as you start doing uh, coding in the real world. So basically what this is, is we have a list. So you notice how we open with a square bracket and we close with a square bracket. And inside that list, are multiple dictionaries, right? So again, imagine that this is for a class, something like that, a you know, some kind of membership software, whatever else. So we're gonna have a list of all of the people that are in 
our group or club or class or whatever. And the values for those people are then going to be in dictionaries. So we have Fred, 20, with a large shirt size. Sue, 18, with a small shirt size. Pat, 30, with a medium shirt size. And Tim, 25, uh, with a small shirt size. Um, and basically, this is how you start to deal with, again, like multiple records, those types of things, and start being able to interact with that data. For this, what we're going to do is we're going to say four record in class list print record. So for record in class list, class list is a list. So therefore each value is going to be between these commas. So this is index zero. This is index one, index two, index three. And that is what we'll literally print out on the screen. So if we look at this, Fred, Sue, Pat, and Tim, we are getting their records here as dictionaries. And if we go down, let me comment this out. So that's a way. Uh, basically what we can do is we can do an F string to try to make that look a lot prettier. So for record in class, so for each one of these dictionaries in class, we are going to use an F string. So we've talked about the F string before. When you want to concatenate text, so you basically you have text and variable values. You want to smoosh that together, make it a little bit easier to read. You can use an F string. Now with this, Again, this is one of the first places where we really start to see this whole double quotation mark, single quotation mark thing. So remember, when you're dealing with an F string, you have to open with either a double quotation mark or a single quotation mark and close with a double quotation mark or a single quotation mark. That's what encapsulates everything. But here's the issue, right? When you do the squiggly brackets for the values in here, and you're doing this with uh, dictionaries, in order to call the value at a key name, again, you have to use either single quotation marks or double quotation marks. So if I did a single quotation mark here and a single quotation mark here, basically it would simply take that as the open and close and it would fail. So for this F string, I'm opening with double quotation marks and closing with double quotation marks. So inside this F string, I can use these single quotation marks and nothing fails out stupidly. So basically F string, double quotation mark, squiggly bracket, record, name, close squiggly bracket. So that'll be the name value. Record age, the age value, record shirt size, the shirt size value, and then you close the double parentheses and you close the, or double quotation marks and you close the parentheses. Now, when we run this, we're going to get something that looks a little prettier. And so we're going to see Fred 20 large, Sue 18 small, Pat 30 medium, and Tim 25 small. So now you start to get something that actually looks a little bit prettier, a little bit easier to understand. And then we're going to uh, get rid of this. And basically, we're going to act as if this is like a little search, uh, search algorithm or such. Uh, let me shrink this by just one more dash. There we go. Uh, so this is, can all be on the screen. Oops. So with this, basically, we're just going to do essentially like a search routine. So we want all the students that are under 21, right? So Fred is 20, Sue is 18, Pat is 30, Tim is 25. Um, so I don't know, we basically, you know, we wanna know who the kids are to, to go to our class or whatever else. So what we can do here is, so for record in class list, so for each dictionary in the class list, if the record's age is less than 21, print out, the record name, the record age, the record shirt. So basically what we're saying here is we're doing a conditional on the if statement. If the age for this particular record is under 21, actually print it out. See, that's how we start to do things like search routines when we're dealing with data. So with this, we're then going to uh, print this out and we're going to see Fred is 20 with a large shirt size, Sue is 18 with a small shirt size, and, and there you go. That's what you got. Uh, we could go back and uh, we could say if uh, record, uh, if record uh, shirt uh, size equals, 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 because remember on a conditional it's equals, equals, and then we say small, so we want everybody with a small shirt size, 
We can then click run and we can see Sue 18 small, Tim 25 small. And again, that starts to give you the very basic idea of again, doing these kind of like search routines through your data. So there you go. Now you understand a little bit about lists and dictionaries in Python. Again, these are two types of multiple different types of what are called collections that you can have in Python. So you can have lists, you can have dictionaries, you can have sets, you can have tuples. We'll deal with the other collections later. Uh, these are the major collections that you're going to be dealing with uh, when you're writing Python code. Again, most of what you're doing here probably looks a hell of a lot like an array if you've been dealing with other programming languages and the important thing to, to, to remember is, yeah, but no. Does it look like an array? Yes. Is it an array? No. Get over it. Again, this is probably one of those times when people that have no coding experience are probably going to be able to get the hang of this a little bit quicker than the people that do have coding experience. Again, to remember, uh, in Python, there are arrays, but when you're dealing with real arrays, real arrays, there's lots of complicated math that, that arrays are, uh, allow you to do very easily. And so in order to do that math, you actually have to import the NumPy module, and then that will give you access to quote unquote real arrays. And then you can do go off and do the fancy math for machine learning or statistics or whatever it is that you're going to do. Just realize that's, that's kind of its own a uh, different world. Again, with lists, remember open closes with the square squiggly uh, with square brackets. Uh, each index is, starts at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I showed you uh, basically how to deal with those indexes. Uh, again, when you start dealing with dictionaries, squiggly brackets, so open the squiggly bracket, close with squiggly bracket, you have the name of the key and then the value. So, uh, so colon, whatever the value is, and then you access those values using the name, the key. Again, one of the things that I'll warn you is sometimes, again, when you're using frameworks or other people's code, sometimes they'll give you a dictionary, but then since you didn't create it, you're not actually sure what the hell's in the dictionary. And so simple things like just figuring out what the names of the keys are can be a pain in the butt. So simply doing print, whatever that dictionary name is, that will print out everything for you. And so you can take a look at it and figure out what key names you're looking for or whatever else. Again, when you're trying to print out the values from a dictionary, the key names and the values from the dictionary, I showed you a couple of ways of doing that, but it is one of those things where there's a, there's a surprising number of ways to get that information. So again, in your particular environment, find one way that you like and just do it. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Again, have I told you about W3 schools? If you get confused with this at all, you can go to W3 schools and they have all this out in like one sheet of paper. It's very, very easy to understand, right? Once you grasp the concept past that, it's just under, remembering what the names of methods and those types of things are. So, uh, so yeah, that's about all there is. So as always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.